The Rich White Rises. Is this an allegory for capitalism? Wait, that'd be fucking dumb. Coincidentally, this movie is fucking dumb. But it's a Chris Nolan movie, that means it thinks it's not fucking dumb. Well, I hate to break this to you, intended audience. But not only is the movie fucking dumb, but also if you like this movie, you're... What did your mind naturally fill in there? If it was anything other than fucking dumb, you're fucking dumb. And also, if it was fucking dumb, well, I'm glad you're projecting correctly. So the movie starts out with Bane on a plane, while the rain in Spain falls mainly on the hills are alive with the sound of stupid. A big plane steals the hostages from a small plane because the small plane's hostages were Bane. I think I just earned my doctorate in Seuss. So then it is Harvey Dent Day, but Bruce Wayne doesn't show up. He's too busy being a cripple and growing really shitty facial hair. And no longer is he be Batman. Also in a horrible business decision, he invested in green energy. So naturally, he's going broke. And to make matters even worse, the person he invested it in... They, 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 Fuck talking. Seriously. Point is, his business partner is Marion Colitar. You may know her from such roles as Leonardo DiCaprio's wife. Her diverse array of acting talents include looking like a cunt and being a cunt. You know how in Disney movies, even before the villain is revealed to be the villain, he already looks like an asshole? Well, in every movie, Marion Colitar looks like someone you want to punch in the face and fuck in the ass so you don't have to look at her face while you're fucking her and also so your future children don't end up with those creepy ass bush baby eyes i am dead serious do not reproduce with this woman anyway bane has a business partner too and his name is faggot giving bane the edge by default because everyone knows that gays have a huge handle on the business world then anne hathaway comes into bruce wayne's room dressed as a maid oh no how can his billionaire playboy life get any worse but then instead of filleting him like anne hathaway dressed as a maid always does in my fantasies, she steals his fingerprints. And a congressman. It's okay, we've got spares. Of both. But then she sells the fingerprints and the congressman to faggot. But just like any homosexual scandal involving a congressman, it immediately goes on the radar. Commissioner Gordon and his squad of gay busters are on site within minutes. And then all of a sudden, the commissioner decides he doesn't smell enough like shit for his liking, so he decides to go into the sewer completely unprovoked. But it turns out that Bane also enjoys smelling of shit. And the two awkwardly run into each other. And then Bane goes, This is the fire I'm Bane, you see. And this is fucking air to make. And Commissioner Gordo goes in the water. And then Bane throws one of his friends in the water because he said, I'm behind when you go away with that. That's agreeable. And there's a guy called John Blake who has unnaturally good intuition. After automatically knowing where Gordon's going to be, he goes to Bruce Wayne's house. He knew he was Batman because one time Bruce Wayne smiled weird. Anyway, after getting like his 15th motivation in the movie, Bruce Wayne finally goes, Okay. Okay, fine, I'll be Batman. Implying that dressing up as a rubber-suited bat person is considered some point of personal redemption. Meanwhile, Bane breaks into Wall Street and assassinates the economy. But then Batman comes in and steals Bane's MacBook Pro. And because of its faulty operating system, it can't even tell time right. Five minutes, my ass. When this shit started, it was high noon. Now it's the middle of the fucking night. Also, the police decide that being Batman is a higher crime than shooting Wall Street. So they chase him until he hops away on his motorcycle by using one of those big trucks that carries cars to- Fuck, this is dumb. Okay, so exposition time. You guys remember Batman Begins, right? You know, the movie that came out six years ago and wasn't particularly good. I'll bet that still sits in your mind very clearly. Anyway, Bane was trained by the same ninjas that trained Batman. But then he got kicked out of the ninjas for being too much of an asshole. But then he wants to carry out the plan of the guy who was an asshole anyway, who was the head of the ninjas that kicked him out. There was also the bad guy in the first movie, but I don't even remember him. I remember the dude that had the bag over his face. And then Bane was raised in some underground hell prison for his whole life until he got out. I guess this is just a roundabout way of saying that Bane is the bad guy, but also that he has some connection to Batman Begins, which was just- You know that's not the one that people liked, right? Anyway, Bruce Wayne's life continues to get shittier and shittier. Alfred leaves. He goes broke. And he even sinks as low as to have frontal sex with the bitch that you should never have frontal sex with. Spite anal. Just. Spite anal! Clean yourself up, man. Granted, none of this deters him from getting his hands on a fucking stupid ass flying Batmobile thing. Whatever, I've stopped caring. Let's see what Anne Hathaway is up to. Oh, hello, bondage gear. Welcome to the party. So anyway, it turns out she's only stealing shit so that she could get a thing so that she could stop stealing shit. And she thought Faggot had it. Well, Faggot didn't have it. Instead, he had getting killed by Bane. It's going around this time of year. Well, before Batman and Anne Hathaway could catch that particular strand of disco fever, they escape in magical flying Batmobile. Bane frantic 
quickly runs out, clutching the lapels of his trench coat as if he's about to disrobe, revealing his milky tits. Unfortunately, this dance must be saved for another day. But Anne Hathaway offers to reunite Batman with his forlorn tango partner. Upon accepting this invitation, Batman is brought down to the sewer. But it was all a ruse. They knew Batman was coming and prepared to spring his trap. Which was a one-on-one -on -one fair fight. That is an alarming display of sportsmanship. Actually, he gives Batman a handicap because he comes out fucking shirtless and then Batman's got all his stupid gadgets. And Bane still beats the living piss out of him. Batman's a pussy in this fucking movie. So then Bane breaks Batman's back and he says to Batman, For what reasons you're this, I'm just about this, all seems very upset to me. And then he throws Batman in the whole prison somewhere in the Middle East that he got, was in the... Thing. He wanted Batman to watch what happened to Gotham. So then Bane goes to the football stadium, and this little kid comes out, and he's all... And then he goes to school in real life and gets beat up. Anyway, so back at the movie, Bane blows up a football field. And the football players are too concerned with playing football to notice that the football field is blowing up. All of them. Like, seriously, the earth is being torn apart four feet from this guy and he still thinks it's smart to throw a fucking tackle. Maybe you should acknowledge the structure of earth that is collapsing beneath you, you stupid shit. Anyway, Bane gets on the intercom and says, what? So basically, he turned Bruce Wayne's ego-friendly hug machine into a new Greenpeace that, you fucking- It'll blow up if anybody leaves or enters Gotham. Also, all the police officers were conveniently underground when Bane blew everything up, and also Bane's hideout was conveniently underneath the Batcave. So Bane has all of Batman's stupid tank things, and there are no police. Oh, and also the bomb is a time bomb anyway, and nobody knows how to disarm it. Hey, can you spell fuck? So anyway, Bruce Wayne is stuck in his fucking hell prison while the other prisoners tell him jaunty sea tales about bane -ays. I I don't know where the correlation with mayonnaise came from twice, it just kind of happened. Apparently some dude nailed this member of wherever the fuck they are in the Middle East royalty. And he was supposed to go to prison. But she didn't want him to go to prison, so instead she went to prison. And then babeled out Bane in prison. Hey, you could get out of the prison, all you gotta do is climb out. But only one person climbed out and that was a little kid. So basically this whole chunk of the movie is just shit's bad and Batman can't climb out of the hole. We're fast forwarding this part. So there's one day left until the nuke decimates the city. Police are out of their hole, Batman's still in his. The cops are planning their final last stand assault on- Wait, stop everything! We don't have the blonde guy. Earlier on in the movie, there was a blonde guy, and he had one line of dialogue where he acted like an asshole. We need him. So Commissioner Gordon brings everything to a screeching halt so we can go get this blonde guy. And then the blonde guy's like, nah, I'm going to stay with my family, bro. And then Commissioner Gordon's like, I thought you were a cop. Is this seriously that important? So back in the hole, Bruce Wayne learns that the way to get out of the pit is to be afraid of climbing out of the pit. Perfect logic. And then he gets afraid, and he's finally on par with a 10-year-old. Wow, dude, that's amazing. Oh, don't worry. It's about to get way more fucking Dumb. So let me set the stage for you. All the bridges except for one out of Gotham have been blown up. And the military is stationed on that bridge prepared to shoot anybody who tries to cross it or blow it up if all else fails. All the water around Gotham is so cold that if you fell into it, you'd freeze to death. But just in case, there are people on the shorelines with AK-47s performing live executions. There's about one day left on the bomb's timer. And since Gotham is pretty much New York, I'm assuming it's geographically similar. Meaning Bruce Wayne is halfway across the world. With no money and nobody knowing where he is. Kinda creates a little bit of a discrepancy when out of nowhere with no explanation he's suddenly strolling down the street with a business suit on. I don't know, maybe I just forgot about the part where Batman has the superpower to FUCKING TELEPORT! So anyway, he gives Anne Hathaway the thing that makes it so she won't have a criminal record anymore. I don't even care where he got it, just what the fuck ever. And he gives her his motorcycle and then goes off to fight in the final battle. So there's this big fight at City Hall and all the polices are fighting all the Bane guys and all the Batmen are fighting all the Banes. And then Batman knocks Bane's face mask off which hurts, apparently. But then out of fucking nowhere, Marion Colatard comes and stabs Batman. No, no, that is so fucking stupid. That is so fucking stupid. Look, I hate the woman's face and voice to the point where it makes me physically angry whenever she's cast in anything. If there was any fucking indication that she was going to be a bad guy at all throughout the movie, I would have assumed the shit out of it. Okay, let's hear it. How do you justify this dumbass plot twist? So that story from earlier? The kid wasn't Bane, it was her. The guy who knocked up the royalty bitch was the bad guy from the first movie that no one in their right mind should remember by this point. And Bane now stripped of any interesting backstory he might have had is now just some dude who lost his face in prison that was her friend. By the way, she just flat out explains this to Batman for like no reason. And then she runs off. And then Anne Hathaway comes out of no 
know. Oh, by the way, there's like a three second shot of that blonde police officer dying. And then Anne Hathaway comes out of nowhere with her fucking motorcycle and shoots Bane and he dies. And then stupid bitch is driving a car that has the nuke in it. And they catch up to her and take the nuke away. And then idiot cunt has the switch that blows up the nuke and then she presses the switch that's gonna blow up the nuke. And they don't have the switch that's gonna disarm it. But luckily, Batman has his stupid flying Batmobile. So he stupid flying Batmobiles the nuke off into the ocean and then it explodes and it's like, no, Batman. And then almost immediately after that, they show him alive again. And then after that scene, there's a scene where they reveal that he had autopilot put in that stupid flying Batmobile thing. Yeah, I appreciate the effort of trying to make it not seem like a cop-out, but that only really works if there's some indication of the sleight of hand before the actual thing occurs. Oh, and John Blake's real name is Robin. Who fucking cares? You may be arguing that I'm thinking too far into a movie about a guy who dresses up as a giant bat, but... I actually have no response to that.